Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play King's Quest. Okay, uh, I know I've started off, uh, I think, pretty much every video in this Let's Play with talking about uh, recording problems that I've been having. Um, so, uh, first it was with the video, with the, like, the right side of the game screen getting uh, clipped a little bit. Uh, and then I had some problems with the audio. So as a couple of people noted, in the first couple of videos, the game audio was quite loud. It was drowning out my voice. In the last video, I tried to compensate for that by turning up my uh, microphone boost. But that had the side effect of making my voice very distorted. Uh, I was kind of overdriving the amplification, and my voice sounded very clipped and uh, unpleasant in some cases. I actually thought it was better the first time around, with because uh, at least my voice was clear. I know the game was a bit louder than I uh, than I was, but at least my voice was pretty clear. I think when the game wasn't making any sound, but. Uh, after I made the last video, I suddenly realized, hey, this is an Apple II GS. I can use the computer's own internal control panel. So um, most of you have probably never had an Apple II GS, so let me clarify. On the Apple II GS, there is a built-in um, system control panel built right into the hardware, built into the, uh, into the firmware on the motherboard, which you can access by pressing Open Apple Control Escape. Now, uh, of course, on a PC, there's no open Apple key, but uh, the Alt key, at least the emulator that I'm using, uh, uses the Alt key to emulate that key. So in the emulator that I'm using, you press Control, Alt, Escape, and here we go. This pops up, and then you go and choose uh, Control Panel, and there's all this awesome stuff that you can choose here. You can fiddle with your ports, because people like to play with their ports. And, uh, and there's slots as well. It's always a lot of fun to put things in your slots. But uh, what I uh, obviously am focusing on here is the sound. So if you go to the sound, there is a built-in volume control built right into the hardware of the machine. So you can press left and right here to change the, uh, the volume, the internal system volume. Um, right here is the default. That's what the check mark on the left-hand side means. The check on the left means this is the default setting. But if you move this to the left, uh, you don't want to move it all the way to the left. Yeah, at this setting, it's actually muted. You don't. I, I don't want to mute it altogether. But at the next lowest setting there, it's reasonably quiet. And I think uh, I've turned down my microphone boost a little bit. Uh, it's still a little bit turned up, but it's not as much as it was before. So I don't think I'll be as distorted as I was. But by doing this, the game won't be as loud because the whole system volume is turned down. So there you go. A nice little. Uh, not exactly a trick. It's. I mean, it's a very standard system function. I just wasn't thinking about it because I haven't had. A real Apple II GS in years, and so I forgot that that was there. So that should solve all our problems, hopefully. Okay, back to the game. So, uh, when we last left off, uh, we had just gotten the shield, uh, the magic shield from the, uh, from the leprechauns, which, um, and then we escaped from their cave through this tiny little hole in the, in the rock. Uh, so, Let's see, so we have two of the treasures. We have the magic mirror, we have the, uh, the shield. Now we just need the, uh, the chest. And that's it, we've pretty, we've pretty much finished the game once we've gotten the chest. Uh, technically, there is no set order in which you need to get these treasures. You can collect them... Um, you can collect the three treasures in any order. However, it is better to get the shield before you get the chest. Uh, we'll see why later, if you don't already know, but if... Uh, when I first played the game, I got the sh uh, the chest first, and it's it's not that difficult to do, but it's better to get the shield first. So, I guess you could say, in a sense, that uh, King's Quest is one of the first uh, sort of open world sandbox games because um, because it allows you to walk pretty much anywhere and uh, and collect the treasures in any order. Actually, I guess it's not one of the first because I think the, there were text adventures like Colossal Cave and things like that, which were much older and which pretty much allowed you to do this, something similar. So I don't think we've seen this guy before. There's a small dwarf here. He is, um, he doesn't harm us, but he, if he gets close to us, he'll steal one of our treasures. Let's actually, uh, that little dwarf caught you by surprise. Is your treasure still okay? Oh no, he, he snatched Graham's treasure. How will we have children now? Uh, let's see, what did he steal? Um, actually, I don't even remember all the treasure that we had. Let's see, we had the, uh, the gold egg is still here, the uh, gold walnut is still here, the pouch of diamonds is still here. What other treasure do we have? Oh, the mirror. Oh, you saw the magic mirror. Wow, that's terrible. Okay, I mean, we can't win the game then. I think this is one of those situations where you can't, uh, where you can't win the game at this point. Um, I think in King's Quest 2, there, uh, I 
uh, the, I don't know if it's the same dwarf or a similar dwarf, but a similar dwarf appears who will, who will steal, your, steal your treasure, but it is possible to get it back. Uh, if you get it stolen, there is a place where you can um, reacquire your stolen treasure. I think the same is true in King's Quest 3. I'm pretty sure, yeah, in King's Quest 3, there's also a place where you can get your treasure back if it gets stolen. But uh, here, nope, I don't think there's any way to get it back. Once it's gone, it's gone. So let me go ahead and load my game. Uh, and we can start thinking about how we're going to get the... Um, the uh, chest. So let's see, I have my map open here. I'm just going to refer to it briefly. So I think I want to go up three screens from here. And then, yeah, this looks promising. And let's go ahead and I like this little lake scene. I think the game actually understands, uh, yeah. The game actually understands the word cattails, but if you might remember, the game doesn't understand the word crown. I think uh, there might have been some slightly uh, unusual priorities when this game's uh, parser's vocabulary was developed. Anyway, so what I want to do is go to the carrot patch, which is right here, and we'll want to get a carrot. The reason I'm getting it now... Um, you pluck a plump orange carrot from the ground. Oh, hmm. Let's take a look at our nice and plump carrot. Oh, it's one of the tastiest looking carrots you've ever seen. But we don't want to eat it ourselves because that's not the point of the carrot. That's not what you do with a carrot. Um, the reason I'm getting the carrot now is because I think... I, I, I'm actually not sure about this. I could be wrong, but I think that if you uh, carry the carrot around with you for a long time, it will get stale and lose its effect. Uh, I'm not sure if that's just like a... I'm not sure if that's an old wives' tale, or I guess in, in my case an old late blight's tale. Uh, I seem to recall before that uh, when I got the carrot very early in the game that it didn't, uh, didn't work anymore. Um, but that could be just me falsely rem remembering things because I have a lot of false memories associated with this game since I played it when I was like six years old. So... There is a, uh, a gate here, uh, or th there's a pen here, an animal pen, and I think we've seen the goat in here before. There is a goat that walks around in this pen. Uh, the gate is rather heavy, but you managed to open it. Um, uh, Lish, one of my viewers, mentioned a couple of videos ago in a comment that uh, this game will very happily uh, mess you up. Uh, this, this is another one of the situations where you can't win the game. If you open this gate and then uh, the goat's not here and you walk off the screen to, to get the goat, um, the goat will basically just walk out of the pen, and you'll never be able to get it again. And that's it. At that point in time, you can't win the game. You find the gate is much easier to close than it was to open. I don't think there's any significance to the gate being more easy. Uh, the game being uh, the gate being easier to close than it was to open. It's just something the game says for some reason. So yeah, this was something that Sierra games were notorious for. Uh, they would often allow you to get yourself stuck in an unwinnable situation, uh, and a lot of people complain about that. Uh, the goat is pacing to and fro. He must be waiting for a bus. Can we talk to the goat? The goat refuses to listen to your words. That's true. Goats are very stubborn. So, um, what you want to do, and I'm not sure how you're supposed to figure this out, but, um, what you're supposed to do is say, sh not shot, but show the carrot to the goat. Now, it, giving the carrot to the goat is a fairly intuitive thing to do. You might think that, actually, let me, uh, let me show you what, what happens if you do that. Why not? Um, so let's go ahead and say give carrot to goat. Yeah, I'm not close enough, but, um, I think this is something that is easy enough to figure out on your own, uh, because you might think, okay, goats maybe like carrots. Goats love carrots! The old goat quickly devours yours. Oh, that must, uh, that must, Graham must like that. Uh, so... Uh, that is useless. That doesn't do anything. What you need to do actually is type show carrot to goat. And I don't think that this is something that people could really intuitively figure out uh, without a hint book. I think this is one of those things which really you're unlikely to be able to figure out unless you, uh, unless you buy the hint booklet for the game, which um, Sierra was notorious also for making puzzles that basically required you to invest an, an extra $10 in the handbook for the game once you once you bought the game. Okay, when you tempt the old goat with a carrot, he starts to follow you. So, um, 
One thing to notice also, um, I, I find this, it's just a little detail, but I find it highly amusing. Actually, because there are two minor details. The first is that um, the goat appears to be walking on Graham's right-hand side, and this is preserved if you walk up and down like this. But if you walk to the side like this, then all of a sudden the goat will um, will always be in front. The goat will always be in the foreground, regardless of um, which way you're heading. Um, another nice thing to note, and I, I just find little details like this amusing, when you're walking upwards, notice the goat's hindquarters. See how the goat's tail is bobbing very enthusiastically as if he were... Uh, as if he were really enjoying himself. But once you get away from the uh, from the goat pen and go onto uh, another screen, this goat will pretty much follow you almost anywhere. Um, the goat will not follow you into water, but I believe that the goat will uh, wait beside the water for you to get out of the water. So like if you fall into a, uh, a, a lake like this one, yeah. The goat does not mind getting its feet wet, but will not swim in the water. You should go back and lead the goat around the water. Yeah, but we can still... Uh, wait, what? Okay, apparently the goat has the ability to, to walk on water. This is a, uh, a magic goat. Okay, uh, is the goat still following me, or did I did I lose it? It seems the old goat has wandered off by himself and is no longer following you. Okay, I was just going to say, um, I think the goat will... Uh, the goat won't leave if you go into the water, but you have to go back and get it. Uh, if you go into a place where the goat really can't go, like into the cave, for example, remember the dark cave where the um, uh, where the dragon was, or where we came, th where we passed through after getting the mirror from the dragon? Uh, if you go in there, the goat just leaves. It just says the goat doesn't like this place, and he just leaves. He's and he's gone. And then once again, you can't. Uh, Actually, you can win the game without the goat, now that I think about it. It's not a requirement to have the goat to win the game, but, uh, yeah, like I was saying, Sierra was notorious for this kind of thing, for making situations where you um, you couldn't really win the game, or at least you couldn't uh, do certain things uh, without, um, you know, without knowing the right thing to do. So basically, there were a lot of situations where you could get yourself stuck. Um... I never really had that much of a problem with that, just because, generally speaking, I don't think there were that many of those situations. Uh, there were some, of course, uh, but generally they were fairly intuitive. So you know, the goat's tail is no longer bobbing, and the tail, uh, the goat, the goat is following a little bit farther behind us. He, he, before he was right beside us, but now he's following, he's lagging behind a little bit, and his tail is no longer enthusiastically wagging. It appears that he's lost some of his, uh, some of his enthusiasm for this. Uh, little adventure that we're on. Maybe he gets tired. Or maybe it's something built into the game to help prevent the goat from getting in your way. I don't know. But actually, he doesn't get in your way because he just becomes part of Graham's sprite when um, when you're at the goat pen, so I don't know. But anyway, I never really thought that, uh, that Sierra was too unreasonable for the most part. There were some exceptions, maybe. But for the most part, I thought Sierra was pretty reasonable in those situations where you'd get yourself stuck. Like, uh, the thing with the goat pen. Okay, I think intuitively you should be able to figure out that if you leave the gate open that leaves that opens up the possibility of the animal inside the pen leaving i mean that would happen in real life as well if you've ever had a goat or any kind of animal that you know grazes in a fenced in or caged in pen if you open the gate the animal is going to go out and you may lose it that's pretty i think that's pretty reasonable that's pretty realistic so i don't know i people complain about uh let me go ahead and, and show you what I'm going to use the goat for. Uh, most of you probably already know, or you can guess at this point if you don't already know. This derives from the story of the, um, what is it, the, the three trolls and the billy goats gruff or something like that. Uh, anyway, it's, 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 a, it's a fairy tale involving a troll on a bridge and a goat. So uh, here's this troll. We've seen the troll before, but now something is different because the goat is with us. It is a well-known fact that goats hate trolls intensely. You should move aside and let the goat take care of this nasty troll. The goat butts the troll right off the bridge, never to be seen in these parts again. There we go. And as soon as we do that, the goat just wanders off, and that's it. And now we'll never see the goat again. The, the goat apparently lost interest in the carrot and just decided, hey, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna butt this troll off this bridge, and that's that's as good as a carrot. So anyway, uh, like I was saying, um, I can't think of too many situations where a Sierra game would really, really unreasonably get you stuck in a situation where you couldn't kind of reasonably expect to get stuck. 
I know people complained a lot, like in King's Quest V, for example, people would complain that it was too easy to die, but people complained about things like, uh, like walking up to the bear. Like in King's Quest V, there's, the, you know, there's, there's that bear uh, who is raiding the, uh, the, bee, uh, the beehive, and if you walk up to the bear, you die because the bear kills you, and people said, oh, that's, that's terrible, that's so treacherous that you can, you, you can die in an adventure game. I thought that was realistic, I thought that was reasonable. I mean, yeah, if you, if you just walk up to a wild bear, yeah, the bear is probably going to maul you. That's it's kind, of, kind of how it works in real life as well. So, I don't know why people complain about Sierra Adventures being uh, unfair so much. They, I thought they were generally fairly fair, at least in terms of dying. Where they were not fair is in terms of the puzzles. Some of the puzzles were a little bit ridiculous, but um, I don't think it's really that... Uh, unreasonable that you can die in these games because it's not like you die randomly. Uh, there's usually a, a reasonable reason why you die. But anyway, uh, okay. You see a crotchety old gnome pacing around his lean-to. Uh, you know, I really, uh, I'm not actually sure what a lean-to is. I think it's this. Uh, the gnome's lean-to doesn't look very sturdy. I think it's this. Uh, this little thing, this little hut. It's not even a hut, it's like a... It's kind of a hut, but it's... Uh, I don't know, I'm not sure how to describe it. And, oh, Graham is ducking because I pressed... I typed a hyphen trying to uh, type in lean to, but it actually, instead of entering a hyphen into the command line, it made Graham duck like that. Which I don't think you really need. I think the only time that ducking is useful is in dodging certain uh, enemies. Like, I... I don't know if this protect, protects you from the witch, or does it protect you from the wolf, or some something that tries to grab you. I think uh, that might protect you if you duck at the right time, but anyway. All right, so let's go ahead and talk to the gnome. Again, we can just say hi. The old gnome tells you he has something that may be very useful to you. Your task is to guess his name in three guesses, and his gift will be yours. Good luck. What is your first guess? Um, you can probably guess at this point in time that this is a riff on Rumpelstiltskin, assuming that you know the story of Rumpelstiltskin, which you probably do if you are familiar with classic sort of uh, so-called Western fairy tales. Um, but if you type in Rumpelstiltskin, um, you know, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be Rumpel with an E-L or with an L-E. I think the game recognizes both. And if, if you type this in, the game says, that is very close, but not quite right. So that's kind of a clue that you're on the right track. But this is an excellent example of where Sierra was really unreasonable with the puzzles. Not with the dying and getting stuck and things like that, but with puzzles. I have no idea how any sane person could ever figure this out. The only real clue for this is in the note. Remember that note we got, which says, uh, sometimes it is wise to think backwards? What you're supposed to do here... This is, uh, I think, a notorious. This is one of the most notorious puzzles in in all of Sierra history. What you have to do is invert Rumpelstiltskin using an inverse alphabet. What that means is, um, I, don't know, I don't know if you've ever seen. You know, it's one of those alphabets where like A becomes Z or Z. Z if you're American, Z if you're not. Um, and so A becomes Z or Z. Then B becomes Y. C becomes X. D becomes Oh, uh, what becomes what comes before X? W, right? W X yeah. D becomes W and so on. So um if you do that sort of a conversion for all the letters in Rumpel Stillskin, you will get and it's kind of scary that I can still remember this after all these years because I, I learned this word when I was uh, again six years old and it's just stayed with me for all my life. The gnome's name, if you invert Rumpel Stillskin in that way, becomes um, Ifenkofigerochprm. That is the gnome's name. Um, what I'm going to do, though, rather than um, rather than uh, guess it correctly the first time, I'm going to go ahead and get it wrong. So let's go ahead and just make some random guess. Uh, the game says you know that's not right, even though uh, I actually didn't know that's not right. Well, now I know because the game told me. And what is your next guess? Uh, I don't know, it's just... Okay. You didn't guess the gnome's name, but he left you a gold key anyway. Better luck next time. You don't have to guess the gnome's name to... Uh, it is heavy and cold. Gosh, all the innuendos in this game. Uh, so... You don't have to guess the gnome's name. If you get his... 
if you get his name wrong, then you get this key. And this key will allow you to open to open door, if I can find the door in question. Uh, so I think, yeah, I can just go left from here. So I'll go ahead and show this off just because uh, I, I want to include pretty much everything that's in the game, if possible. At least the major things that are in the game. So uh, if I didn't show this, I would be emitting a fairly, I think, fairly significant part of the game. So let's go ahead and show this off. So if you come down here, I think we've seen this door before. Um, and it, this door is unlocked with that key that we just got. So let's go ahead and uh, the massive door is securely locked. Um, I don't know if anybody else will find this as amusing as I do, but I remember uh, my grandmother when she was playing this game. Um, my grandmother was uh, a Finn, and so her English was not that great. And so when she tried to open the door and the game said that the door is securely locked, her response was to type, open securely locked. I don't think she actually understood what that meant, but she just thought, okay, it's a securely locked. Okay, let's open the securely locked. Anyway, uh, what we're supposed to do is unlock the door. Using the gold key, you unlock the huge door, and now we can go in. And this is a segment that really, um, really troubled my family, I remember when I was growing up. So, um, on the Apple II GS that we originally played this game on, just as on a PC, and I think most, I think most home computers, there were four arrow keys for, you know, up, down, left, and right. And so we had been using those to play the game, and so we went up the staircase like this. You'd press right up, 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 right up. And we went through the whole staircase like that. Uh, again, speaking of my grandmother, my, my poor grandmother, she had um, pretty serious arthritis in her fingers. And she went through this whole thing by herself several times. And she said it was excruciating on her fingers to have to press right up, right up, right up like that constantly because her fingers were just not really were not really built for that. Until one day, I had the uh, magnificent, I wouldn't call it forethought, it was more like curiosity, <laughs> to read the game's manual and find that you can use the numeric keypad to move also in diagonal directions. And so it turns out that if you press uh, numeric keypad 9 here, that moves Graham diagonally up and to the right. And when I discovered this, I was just a kid, and I was the one to discover this. My family was amazed. It, it's like autopilot. After we'd gotten so accustomed to moving Graham uh, up these stairs using right up, right up, right up, all of a sudden, you could just press one button, and he would just magically walk up the stairs by himself until he gets to this point. You have to, you have to do a little bit of maneuvering here, but and then here you press numeric keypad 7, and he just walks by himself. It, it was a miracle. My family was really... Uh, Really glad that I had discovered this because I saved them, I think, a lot of headaches throughout their throughout their lives. I am here! Okay, so here we are at the top of the stairs. And, um... Let's see, should I end the video here? I think I can end the video here because, um... Everything else that we can see from this point is something that we can see using the alternate means of transit, which we will get using the, uh using what we get when we guess the, the gnome's name correctly. Um, just to, to not keep everyone in suspense, I'll go ahead and show you what's waiting on the next screen. And it is this giant. And you can see he's carrying something, and you might guess that that is the magic chest which we're after, and if you'd guess that, then you'd be right. Oh, uh, it says you're fortunate that you have the magic shield, or this giant would cause problems for you. That's why I said it's better to have the, um, the shield because the, the, this giant can't hurt you if you have the shield. I think I mentioned in, the, in a previous video when I was showing off the, uh, the music for the Apple IIGS version of the game, when I was a kid, um, this giant absolutely terrified me. I actually had trouble sleeping because of this screen, and really it was just because of, um, because of how the giant suddenly shows up. With other... Um, you can call them enemies, they're not really monsters, but like enemies or opponents in the game, um, they are announced. There's like a message that announces them and says, oh no, there's a wolf after you, or there's an ogre or a witch or whatever. But this giant, there's no message, there's no announcement. He's just there, there's some 
somber music playing, and he just comes at you. He just comes right at you. There's no fooling around. He just comes directly towards you. And to me as a child, it really seemed like something from a nightmare. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not joking. I, I seriously, it, it really is exactly how things are in nightmares because there's no announcement. There's no sort of warning. Just suddenly something horrifying appears in front of you and will start to come at you. And, and sometimes there is, in fact, music in, in nightmares as well. So it really played out exactly like a, an actual nightmare. And I was so scared as a kid of, of, of that screen. It wouldn't have been as scary if, if the game had just said, oh, look out, there's a giant. He will try to chase you down or something. Then it would have been just like a scene from a computer game. But just the way all of a sudden this, this giant comes up with this music and and no fanfare whatsoever it, it really was exactly like uh, like my nightmares as a child so anyway um i will go ahead and end here next time we will we will come to the same place but we'll come using an alternate route uh we'll actually come from the west and if we go there now we will see that there is nothing here but a lot of clouds if we look around hmm, you're in the land of the clouds it is rumored that a giant lives up here and if we keep walking this way, yeah, there's nothing here but clouds. By the way, I don't think you can walk on... Oops. So you're walking on clouds, huh? Unfortunately, that's an impossible task that cost you your life. Uh, actually, it wasn't impossible for, like, the right, the right two-thirds of the screen. It only became impossible in that one spot. So I think, uh... I think, uh, this game's claim that you cannot walk on clouds is not quite credible in this situation unless there's some kind of plateau unless there's an extensive um protrusion of terrain that is directly underneath this cloud but i find that highly improbable anyway so uh next time we will come from here uh we will find a way to get onto this cloud platform from the west end and go and get the uh the chest from the giant, and uh, that will be pretty much it. That will be almost the end of the game at that point. So, all right, folks, thank you for watching, everyone. I hope that you've enjoyed, and uh, join us next time for more adventures of Sir Graham in uh, Quest for the Crown. I don't think I've ever even mentioned, uh, by the way, that uh, Sir Graham was named because of Roberta Williams's fondness for Graham crackers, uh, Roberta Williams being the woman who... Uh, wrote and designed most of the King's Quest games, including this one. Um, yeah, she was very fond of Graham crackers, and so she thought, hey, let's name our protagonist Graham. Why not? So yeah, that is all for now. Again, thank you, everyone. I hope that uh, everyone's doing well, and that I will see you in a future video. Thanks again, everyone. Bye-bye for now.